Thank you. Welcome on this third Sunday of Advent to First Baptist Church, Kansas City. Today, sometimes during during the holiday season, we wonder, what do we do now? What do we do? Especially when, if we've grown up in a tradition of gift giving and receiving, and if you've ever looked in your closet, or you looked in your children's closet, or if the children have graduated and gone on with their own life, and what normally happens? They leave their stuff behind. They don't take all the Legos, and they don't take all the stuffed animals, and they don't take everything that they were given over all the seasons of Christmas. All the gifts that Grandma, Grandpa brought to the house and, and gave to them. There's a lot there. And then you are challenged. What do you do? Do you just throw them away? Do you sell them? Do you give them to Goodwill? Do you <clears throat> give them to the kids down the street? What do you do? Well, there's only one thing that we wonder, what do we do during the holiday season? But something bigger, something bigger about a question, a question that God presents to us or confronts us every season of Christmas, every time we, it comes around each year, we're challenged. We're challenged about our faith. We're challenged about who we are in Christ. What does it mean to be a faithful person of God? And John the Baptist, if, if you've ever really studied John the Baptist, you know, he wasn't really Baptist, he just baptized. So he didn't belong to the first Baptist church of Jerusalem. But the idea that he was the first proclaimer to get people ready for the impending presence of Christ in the physical sense and the promise that had been made years and years ago. John had a knack of getting the truth out, confronting people's situation. And that didn't make him a very popular person. Let's listen to what the situation was when he came into his ministry. From John, from, from Luke chapter 3, beginning verse 7 through 18. It shows that John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? The crowd asked. John answered, Anyone who has two shirts should share with the one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? <coughs> Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, Don't extort money, and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their
their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, and straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor. And they gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. How about that? Doesn't that just excite you about Christmas coming? Doesn't this just motivate you to say, Come on, John, give me that message. Confront me with who I am. Because what does he do? He, he confronts the people with truth. You know, is it something that you come to church? Isn't the sanctuary looking beautiful? Yes, it is. Makes us feel good. At least it gives us an opportunity to observe and have a response to it. How wonderful it is. Sometimes we can be part of the faith community and we become accustomed to it so much and, and we feel real good about our faith. We feel like we're doing well. And then we have somebody show up and say, you know, just because you've been part of the church for 50 years doesn't make you a good Christian. Just because you've been getting regular doesn't make you okay. Just because you smile on Sunday doesn't make you okay. Can you imagine coming in and you've just had a hard week and then the person addressing you says, you brood of vipers, who warned you of the coming wrath of God? Make you just want to go, hallelujah! Thank you for pointing out my, my way. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me that I am not all that. Now, that's nice. Now that you told me my problem, what are we to do to change the situation? It's no different than going to the doctor, right? We go to the doctor, we have ailments, we have pains, we have struggles, and we say to the doctor, you know, this is what the this is what's going on with me. And you notice doctors say, well, the patient is presenting. It's just a presentation. I have an ache here. I have an ache here. I've got pain in my big toe. You know, numbness in my right hand. And then the doctor goes through the list of all the symptoms that we've been trained to Notice, and then here comes the prescription. You know, because we go there and we say, what am I going to do? What do I need to do to change my way, to change my situation, my present situation? And then the doctor says, this is what you're supposed to do. you got to take this pill so many days. you got to Cut back on this. You got to do this. And you remember when Jesus was asked, what should I do? And then the fellow said, and then Jesus told him what he needed to do. And he said, well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Because John, he gives a prescription and the prescription is basically 
Be content. Be content that you have what you need. Be content that God provides what you need. We do not need to be fearful that we will never have enough. To have a sense of God provides. Because in the Lord's Prayer we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Because we trust that God provides everything we want. So if you have more than you need, and someone has need, give them what they need if you have enough. If you have enough, you have extra, you give. Clothing as well as food. Then, if you have a job that collects money, you know, who are the people that retailers don't want messing with the cash register? People who have financial problems. If somebody has a financial problem, you put them where they're handling bunches of money, it's tempting. Is that true in the banking business too? That you definitely don't want someone handling money? It's not that, it's not saying that the person is bad, it's just saying if you got a lot of problems at home with your finances, Yes, it's a temptation. And what does the Lord's Prayer say? It says, lead us not into temptation. So, we be careful. And if you're a tax collector, and do you recall a tax collector that Jesus had interaction with? Zacchaeus, the wee little man who climbed the sycamore tree, and Jesus said, I'm going to have dinner with you. And as soon as he comes down out of the tree, he tells Jesus, oh, I'm going to give back all that I've taken and plus more. Be content. So apparently Zacchaeus didn't go to the revival meeting of, of John's at the river, did he? He didn't, he didn't get that message. He had to meet Jesus himself before he could make that kind of decision. So, being content, <clears throat> trusting that things are going to work out. Because look at that first part. If you have more than you need, help someone who doesn't. Then, if you can't be in meat, what have we added to our societal situation? <coughs> Opportunities to be cared for until you can get back on your feet and take care of your bills and so forth. And then, if you're in a position of power like soldiers are, you notice that John doesn't say it's bad to be a tax collector. He just says, take, you know, collect what you're supposed to. Nothing more, nothing less. Just do your job. And then the soldiers, it wasn't bad being a soldier, according to John. And he said, just don't abuse your power. Just don't abuse your power. Don't extort. Don't say, if you don't do this, if you don't give me this much money, it's almost like, give me your lunch money. Those soldiers might have been those kids when they were younger, 
picking on people, saying, give me your lunch money. Now think about the guy that Jesus said, do we have anything to eat? And then Andrew says, oh, here's this boy with, with two fish and three loaves, or five loaves, however many it was, taking his lunch, making it, making it last for everybody. But basically it is contentment. What should we do? Be content. Stop living like the world lives in the sense of there's not, never enough. Because think about the advertisements during this time of year. Oh, you got to have this. You got to have that. You need that. In all reality, you probably don't. We're just called to love God, love others. And what do we often say? It sure is hard being a Christian. It's hard living what Jesus talks about. It is hard. But then John says, but one greater than I am is coming. I'm not even worthy to snap the sandals together. And that's the good news. That is truly the good news. Not that his, he's not worthy to snap the sandals, but the idea that he is going to baptize with the Holy Spirit, which is which teaches us the truth, and also fire. And fire, as the Old Testament prophets would say, fire refines the precious metal. It refines the precious metal. And we are precious in God's sight, and therefore fire is sent that we might be refined. And all those things that we find as tough are not so tough. Because as we praise, as we worship, as we live out what he calls us to, all that junk, all that stuff that holds us down, all that stuff that says, woe is me, and it can't happen, it won't happen, will all fade away. <clears throat> That's the good news. We are confronted with the truth of God, what God expects in life, and it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. Because as you, as I, as we allow the text, allow the Spirit to reflect that light upon us, and then we start remembering our miscues, our moments when it doesn't matter what family we come from. It doesn't matter how long we've claimed faith in Christ. It doesn't matter all that because we're broken vessels. We're broken vessels. And through Christ, he covers the cracks. He makes us whole. And when we stand before him, like the little drummer boy, what do I have? What do I bring to the manger? I bring nothing but a broken song. But Jesus smiles and says, I hear your heart. I hear your desire. I hear what you can become, what you are becoming. 
Don't look at how tall the mountain is. Look at how I help you climb the mountain. I help you climb. That's good news. He doesn't say, do it on your own. He sends his Holy Spirit to help us. He refines us. If we will allow, if we'll stay in the furnace long enough to be transformed. In Jesus' name, amen.